Ladies and gentlemen, you are about to experience Uncut Live with Kenneth Clark. We highly apologize that we were not able to implement all of the content in this viewing, but we hope that you are able to enjoy the content that we were able to capture. You are now about to be plugged in with Uncut Live. What's good, everyone? Welcome to an edition of Uncut Live with Kenneth Clark, where we focus on mind, body, soul, and spirit, faith, politics, social issues, you name it. Nothing is off the table. We keep it 1,000 on 100. We keep it 100 on 1,000. And it's a lot that's going on in this mm, 2020 year. I should say. So most have seen the profile of mine uh, where I have changed my status to black, meaning in black justice. And so there's a question that happens to come onto my radar. They say, Kenneth, I see that you always are active out and about in the community region of the DMV. For those, when I say DMV, I'm saying DC, Maryland, and Virginia, okay? Uh, not to be confused with uh, what's my say, Delaware and Massachusetts and Vermont. No, not that, not that DMV. I'm talking about DC, Maryland, and Virginia. Uh, the question that I was asked was, what does black justice look like? And in connection, what does black justice look like at large? But specifically, what would black justice look like within gorgeous Prince George's, Prince George's County, Maryland? And so on today, I'm going to uh, introduce you guys to two community uh organizers, people that uh, that are very active, uh, involved, engaged uh, in the, the fight for liberation and the fight for justice. And so without further ado, da 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 da. <laughs> Um, okay, I, I will introduce each other, um, ourselves. My name is Jaina Parker. Um, I live in Prince George's County. I've lived in Prince George's County for several years now, almost about 25 to 30. Um, I was raised in Prince George's County. I graduated from Prince George's County Public School System, friendly senior high school, <laughs> class of 2002. And I am a proud, proud graduate of the wonderful, the great, great Coppin State in Baltimore and HBCU. Um, and I just am passionate about not only the members of my community as it relates to race, but the members in, within my community as it relates to Prince George's County and Maryland as a whole. And I, I just continuously see this vision of a really empowered society, um, a really empowered uh, community that is all working together to help each other on so many different levels um, that goes past um, the mirage <laughs> okay, of a community that is doing that. Um, I, I would love for that to be done on every level consistently within Prince George's County and Maryland at large. And that is kind of my focus. I'm joined by... Hey, you ain't getting all that from me, but <laughs> <laughs> my name is Kima Hutchison Harris. I am the mother of Kevin Sneed. I have a, well, I'm going to say I am the co-founder of Community Justice. It's an organization that consists of community leaders, organization, I mean, I'm sorry, organization leaders, community members, um, directly impacted people advocate, a activists, all working for one common goal, and that's to end police brutality in PG County, but 
pretty soon we'll probably be trying to do to work in other areas like Maryland, I mean DC and Virginia. But right now we're we're focusing on Prince George's County. And thank you, Penny, for having us. Yes, thank you for having us. Not a problem. <laughs> Um, as I always say, y'all, Uncut Live with Kim and Clark, you never know who will be on the set. And you would never know who would have to, uh, who I would have to bring and blend the perspectives um, that you all so rightfully hear um, respectfully uh, from myself. Um Sorry, y'all. Doing some adjustments here. It's uncut. It's uncut. 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 So there it is. There it is, y'all. Let's go um, closer to me, Kima, so we can see the uncutness here. Ooh. We got you, Kenny. There we go. <laughs> um, Gotta have my sister in frame. <laughs> yeah. So the 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 uh. Uh, as y'all might have saw yesterday's show, we talked about uh, I had the beloved candidate of Miss Gladys Spoon uh, come on here. And uh, y'all know I only bring guests that really kind of support the ideologies of how I believe. Uh, I believe we discussed yesterday um that yeah, she was a can she is a candidate running for to be judge. But I expressed with her uh, my concept, my construct of belief is is that I believe that the world, the society that we live in, is missing the humanism factor. Uh, and I know that 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 raffles a lot of people's minds. It's just like humanism. What are you trying to be deep? No, I'm not trying to be deep. It's, 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 we have we have a society that makes a lot of excuses for how the oppressed continue to get oppressed, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and how uh, individuals uh, continue to get mistreated or we use uh, rhetoric that I like to call as determining factors to decide on how we're going to treat individuals. Mm. You know, it's like, hey, you know, if you're a Republican, I guess you're really going to heaven. If you're a Democrat, oh, I feel sorry for you because you might be going to hell. Uh, you know, we just come up with these, you know, these stuff that's like and, and 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 when you think about justice, when I think about justice, when I think about liberty, when I think about the systematic oppression that, that continues to happen, it still goes back to one thing. Yes, sir. Humanism. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that sometimes that humanism is often bluffed out with other stuff. So when you say humanism, define what that means to you. So for me, um, where we don't use but like what does that word specifically mean to you? To, to me, mm -hmm. this is I'm you know this is may not be what what it says in the dictionary. No, I'm fine. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Like this is this is my mm -hmm. where we don't use social class, mm -hmm. uh, political affiliation, mm -hmm. uh, uh, social status as determining factors on if we're going to treat people the way that they should. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like somebody might say, you know, hey, are you a Republican? Oh, I ain't. Oh. I have literally heard specifically uh, just within the limelight of work where people will say uh, Democrats support policies or implement policies that really, uh, really implement things. So, like the abortion, for example. Mm -hmm. I'm y'all. I'm, I'm I'm saying this, okay. So everything that I'm saying is coming on me. People have said that, uh, like Democrats, for example, they don't push or they don't have a stance. They push the the thing of supporting abortion. Mm -hmm. 
So then you have the Republicans who are, you know, Republicans, they're, they're against this abortion. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, we saw the episode, I called it an episode the other night, where we had a political candidate that did not denounce mm -hmm. white supremacy, mm -hmm. did not denounce white supremacy at all. Mm -hmm. But we have people that would denounce, mm -hmm. you know, women getting abortion. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, and I think, who, you know, how does that, you know what I'm saying, like... How does that connect? Yeah, you know what I'm saying, like... I mean, I mean, when you think of... It connects for the people who believe that way because it falls under a overarching thought process um, that aligns with the construct of dominance with a certain gender as well as dominance with a certain gender and race, right? So within the construct of people who usually believe the thought process of, uh, well, not, not holistically, because we do know a lot of Christians and other religious groups, it's not just Christians, like let's mm -hmm. clarify that as well. A lot of people say that it's just Christians that are against abortion. That's not true. There are a lot of religious groups that have come out and said that they are against abortion. Um, but when you take it in context to someone who would be against abortion but support white supremacy, that, those two factors together, falls under the thought process and construct of someone who believes that a certain race and gender should be in control of things such as a woman's body and just the way that society does view another race. And again, that's when those two things are put together. So the, in that thought process, they also feel as though that process aligns with their perception of what Christianity is. Right. Mm -hmm. So their perception of Christianity is that for their life or their thought process, sometimes this thought process is even for people who aren't in that race or of that gender, but their perception of Christianity and their belief system is that this is what aligns to it. No abortions, but white supremacy. Now, I'm not saying that that is Christianity. I'm saying that that's someone's perception mm -hmm. of Christianity when you take together those two factors of their belief system, right? And so it, it doesn't confuse me why people think that way. I just think that it, it, it's another example of the hypocriticalness mm. and the uh, misinterpretation of Christian principles uh, purposely um, to advance a certain cause mm. or, or, or um, ideology that doesn't align with the reality of things. I want to I want to add to that because I'm kind of confused at how Christianity believes those Ten Commandments: Thou shalt not kill, steal. But this is all we see done to people of a different race mm -hmm. or a lower class. You know, we see those things done. So it's really like a, a it's really to me really. Um, confusing because I don't understand how you, you want me to, to to believe that we serve the same creator, mm -hmm. but you get to do these things without any impunity. Yes, without any impunity. And we just supposed to turn the other cheek? Does the same laws in your Bible apply to you as it do to us? Because we're following them. Mm -hmm. You know, so I mean, I just went, um, I'm just kind of confused to why it's, di it's two different laws for people. It's mm -hmm. two different laws for two different groups. And it's the people that, you know, are of a different socioeconomic or race class that these two different rules and laws and areas of justice apply. Mm -hmm. And people don't even want to acknowledge it because mm -hmm. they're like, oh, that's not, that's not true. That's not true. What it is. And uh, I can even just take it from a, a brief historical analogy, an analogy. When the people in the 13 colonies and the colonizers uh, said, hey, we're going to give me liberty or give me death. We're going to fight against the tyranny of England. They are seen as uh, saviors, um, as, as wonderful people, as great leaders who laid the foundation for America. And I'm not going to say that that isn't, that there isn't a space for that. In, relates to, in relation to a certain thought process, I'm not going to say there's not a space for that in relation to a certain thought process, 
But then when you look at how history, um, when it's told through a different perspective and the predominant perspective that tells history to our, our children in American um, school system, let's look at Nat Turner. Mm. Nat Turner said, give me liberty or give me death. That's what he said. And he acted on that in the same manner as the colonizers did when they colonized the America and then subsequently turned against British tyranny, right? But he's demonized. He's called, uh, he's, he's the errant property that went crazy and uh, did this uprising and murdered children, which he did murder children. Um, but he's demonized to such a degree that the point of him risking his life to free his brethren that were enslaved, enslaved and suffered horrible conditions under legislation put in by uh, the founding fathers and then such. That's lost. That's not glorified. That's not talked about. That's not any of that. And I know someone is going to probably use this clip and say, are you saying that Nat Turner was right to kill children? Okay, again, detracting from the point. What I'm saying is that we oftentimes look in a historical and present perspective from the perspective that when a certain group of people does something that aligns with the Constitution or their perception of the Constitution, it's valid and right for them because their thought process is the Constitution was only written for them. The Constitution was only written for white people. The Constitution was only written for uh, people of a higher class, of people of this, this, this socioeconomic class. So I, so I have the right to implement the things in the Constitution because I'm entitled to it. And subsequently, the thought process, however subconscious, these other people don't have the right to ask for the same constitutional rights mm -hmm. or push for the same rights and entitlements under the Constitution of a country that they live in, breathe in, blood, sweat, tears to build and pay taxes in. That, that theme, that thought process, is that is what is consistent within American society, right? And then when you address it and you say, hey, there are two different Americas here. Mm -hmm. There are two very different Americas, but I'm, I'm paying the same taxes. Mm -hmm. and, or, or, I'm having, or, I'm, or I'm told that I have the same constitutional liberties. When you start to address it, it's like there is this gaslighting. Oh, you're attacking America. I'm not attacking America. I believe in America, and because I believe in America, I should have the same constitutional rights of a country that I was born in, uh, I'm a citizen of, I have blood, sweat, and tears in, and that I respect. I have the same constitutional rights. And if I'm not given those rights, I should have the same entitlements to protest for those rights, just like everyone else. Mm. When white people with guns and machine guns in open carry states can walk around and not worry about any any sort of police yeah. harassment. And then black people within the same states of an open carry are shot within seconds by a police officer on a routine traffic stop when they haven't even pulled out a gun and there's no, there's no consequences to that. No one can say that there is not two different Americas. And if they do say it, they're saying it at, 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 um, from the space of either being a beneficiary of that other America or being still under the mental oppression of that other American mindset. Yeah, that that that's that's that that those are some good um all this is a good way of driving driving things uh to its to its perspective. So in 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 relation to uh, I know we have elections coming up in Prince George's County, Maryland. We have elections coming up all over. But particularly to, today, y'all, on Uncut, we're going to concentrate on Prince George's County. What do you think could, I know in English, uh, I know my professor would probably say that that's wrong, you can't use that. But for the sake of this being Uncut, I'm going to use it. What do you think and either one of you guys can, can, can answer this. Mm -hmm. What do you think could either advance uh, the opportunities for gorgeous Prince George's or be implemented to make it gorgeous? Like, what do you, like... So you want me 
Um, I, I'm going to be totally transparent with you guys. I can only speak to police as far as the police uh, brutality in the county is concerned. I'm going to be totally honest because I am not as, as knowledgeable about the political realm as I should be, but I'm getting there. But as it, it stands, my passion is police brutality, is stopping it. It's police accountability, excuse me, and stopping police brutality. So what I do believe that can be done to um, make it gorgeous is to, to fix the eyesore, which is police brutality, which is the education part of Prince George's County, which is people who are homeless in the county. And most people don't even know you have homeless people sleeping on your, sleep set, your streets at night who have nowhere to go because there's no facility for it. There's a lot of things that can be tackled in the county to make it better. But what I focus on, and there's other organizations focusing on that, i.e. Jaina is a force by herself. She doesn't <laughs> need an organization. She's a force by herself. But you have people tackling different things. But what community justice tackles is police brutality. And I can tell you exactly what can start to change the, the beatings and killings that happen in the county as far as the police is concerned. We can have officials who really, and be, um, I'm gonna try to compose myself because every time I talk about officials, I get angry. I get angry because how many times must we talk to officials for change in the county? How many times must we go to Annapolis, ask for bills, and even with the, the school district, I just found out with the school board, I just found out it's not fully staffed. I'm having a problem with officials just doing what they need to do to get in these offices. We need them to do something to change it. Hold your office, I mean, your office is accountable when they do something the first time. That way we have a professional police department that really is, is there to protect the citizens, not to beat the hell out of them. You know, and hold your um, hold your um, chiefs. If it's management problem, hold the chiefs accountable for not keeping their officers in line. But as it stands for police brutality, I think the officials need to to um, be more more aggressive as far as holding these officers accountable, so the taxpayers can stop paying for the brutality in the county. And I'll pass it to Jaina. <laughs> so first off, Miss Parker, excuse me. <laughs> Kima, uh, Kima is awesome. Uh, one of the things I want to say is, is, is to clearly acknowledge um, people like Kima, uh, like Kenny, um, like Chris Orieva, and um, Amity Pope, uh, Shanice mm -hmm. Bamiro, mm -hmm. Ashanti Martinez, um, Kiana Johnson, Nicole Mundy, um, uh, Nini Tay. Um, there are so many different advocates within Prince George's County that consistently work in the different spheres and realms um, of uh, the areas that need to be addressed, um, from the LGBTQ community to the incar incarcerated returning citizens to education. Um, we have wonderful advocates that are actually our school board members, like Edward Burroughs and Rahila Ahmed. You have organizations like the PG Cavs that provide information. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I want to make sure that everyone is clear that while I am a very uh, talkative and expressive person, mm -hmm. I, I do work in coalitions. I, I don't work in a silo by myself. Um, I, work, I work with wonderful people like Kima um, to continue to push change within the county. Um, and I would be remiss if I didn't um, call out those names. Uh, PG mm -hmm. Mutual Aid. PG Changemakers, Brandon uh, Jackson, um, Boom, uh, that works with um, Life After Release. Um, all these different people, all these different organizations work consistently um, to, to cause change. And I, mm -hmm. I think is amazing. Reverend Jamila um, Woods, I mean, she's a, a force by herself as well. Um, so Latasha Ward, Monica Roebuck, mm -hmm. I mean, all these different people work in all these different organizations. Uh, to create change. That being said, <laughs> in relation to making Prince George's gorgeous for everyone, everyone, okay, 
here are some things that we have to talk about and we have to be transparent about. Um, you have to start with the different sections of Prince George's, okay? And you have to acknowledge the positivity that's going on as well as where there's improvement. A lot of times with Prince George's County, I find that when you start talking about where Prince George's County can improve, you get met with such pushback mm -hmm. of people being like, but we're good at this, but mm -hmm. we're good at that. And I understand where that comes from. That comes from years of media, um, whether it's television, radio, newspapers, constantly bashing our school system, our, our community at large um, as a whole and making us seem like we're, we're this horrible community to where we're automatically defensive if someone says, hey, I think you need to improve this. So it's not that that thought process or that response isn't justified, but I will also say that response and that, ju that response doesn't help <laughs> make it better, right? Mm -hmm. So understanding why there's a trigger to that, that's first off, understanding why there's such a trigger to that and then addressing that and then moving on. Right. There are so many things that Prince George's County school systems do do well. We have a whole bunch of programs. People come to us for tag, talented and gifted training. Um, we have amazing programs as it relates to our arts department. We have amazing programs as it relates to uh, Montessori schools and this, that and the third. Now, on the other side of that, where can Prince George's County schools be supported? OK, there can be. And, and, and I do want to shout out Dr. Monica Golson and her team. Um, who have done an amazing job of really taking the narrative that these media perceptions try to continually push as it relates to Prince George's County and making sure that the narrative is really honest, appropriate, and truthful about the great things within our school system. Um, e even myself, as a, as a parent, I have challenges with the school system, but I will never um, disrespect Prince George's County Public Schools um, in the capacity of I will support before I say anything else. Right. And so where can you support the school systems advocating for changes from something as, as big, but yet small as advocating for changes in the names of all these buildings that are named after segregationists and slave owners, uh, and making sure that uh, we get funding. A lot of people talk about the P3, which is a public private partnership to build schools at a faster rate than Prince George's County. But not a lot of people are talking about how there's actually a law and settlement and ruling on the books that Maryland is supposed to be paying for these schools. The state of Maryland is supposed to be paying for these schools within Prince George's County because they didn't allow Prince George's County to have new schools for several years. So we're not even supposed to be paying out of pocket with this public-private partnership. Um, so that's, that's a bigger thing, knowing like your background mm -hmm. and information. Um, how can we support in relation to special education? Like the question it shouldn't be what's wrong with Prince George's, is how can we support people to improve Prince George's? And so when you look at that question, as it relates to every aspect of Prince George's, you're going to find places in where you can support. Um, so that would be the first thing, right, in relation to education, going and making sure that the right funding is put in the right places for the right things. Um, we talk about in relation to the school system, there's this big conversation around removing school police. They're called school resource officers. They don't provide resources. They are police. That's what they are. They're police in the schools. A lot of people say they feel safer with policing. A lot of people feel that they don't. Um, looking at that conversation holistically, looking at it from a perspective of not just what you assume is going on with police being in schools, but from what the reality is based on data, right? That, those are the ways that we can start supporting these different things. Asking people, well, where's the data on that? Mm. Where's the evidence on that? Mm. Where's the support on that? You know, I had a county council member recently tell me, well, uh, the, the crime in Prince George's County has been the lowest it has in years. And I asked her, I ain't going to call you out, sweetheart, but you know who you are. I asked her directly, okay, do you have any data that shows a correlation exactly. between the presence of police and then the mm -hmm. reduction in crime as it relates to these different things? Show me that. So just, I think that would be the start of that. I mean, can I add this? Oh, go ahead. I have no. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, that's good. No, that's good. That's good. You're good. Go ahead. No, I'm gonna let you go. I'm gonna take a step out real quick. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to add, like when she said, my son um, went to, you know, PG schools, and my daughter did too. Prince George's County schools, and my daughter did, did too. And though they had a lot of stuff, she's white. They had a lot of stuff. 
she went to wise my daughter went to wise um they had a lot of stuff for her it was like um i don't know it was something about the education itself as was stated earlier we apologize that we were not able to upload all of the content as we are looking to continue to provide you more and better quality uncut live with kenneth clark is willing and openly available for you to donate free will offerings cash app is dollar sign b r e a h o f l i f e one nine or you can type in the cash app the phone number of 202-805-2651 it is our prayer and our endeavorment that we continue to provide you good quality content and to keep bringing you thoughts and perspectives surrounding the community mind body soul and spirit faith politics social issues